So today was the big day. Disney just launched the new streaming service in Disney Plus. Jack and I are here to give our thoughts and review, and it's coming up. Hey, what's going on guys? It's Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics. We do a lot of comic and pop culture related videos on this channel. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now today was the big day, the day we've all been waiting for. I'm a huge Disney fan. Jack, I know you're a fan of Disney as well. But counted down, anticipation, launched Disney+. Plus. I know as soon as I woke up, I checked the app, downloaded the app, installed the app, and I got right in at the beginning. But how how was your experience so far? Yeah, I cannot complain, Brian. I did not have a lot of like the denied getting entry into the app or kind of getting booted out the way a lot of people did. My only technical issue was I wasn't getting full view of the home screen. Um, but with the way the Disney Plus app is set up, that was really easy to navigate. I also have to say, I was watching it on a Roku device, and to be honest with you, Roku is not the best platform for a lot of apps and streaming services. So I don't know what, per se, you could attribute to Disney Plus and what you could put really on Roku. Right. I use it on an Amazon Fire TV device. But I got right in this morning. Got the kids ready for school, backed out of it, came back, and then, yes, I was victim to the dreaded can't connect. Um, but to be honest, I knew if you're – well, I work in IT, so you're kind of used to some of these type of launches. But everyone was complaining as big as Disney was and as much as they've been, you know, pressing this and putting it out there and letting people know they should have been prepared. I think they kind of were prepared because – Yes, we had issues, but it seemed to be resolved fairly quickly. By the afternoon, I wasn't having any issues with it. I was watching what I wanted to watch. I mean, first thing is, I know a lot of people are going right in and watching Mandalorian. Me, we talked about this. The first thing I went in was going and I watched the old classic 1970s Pete's Dragon movie because I wanted to watch it a couple weeks ago, but didn't want to pay for it and knew it was coming to Disney+. Plus. Well, yeah, and I remember the launch of the WWE app, and it had the same kind of experience, right? It was difficulty day one, and now it's a, it's a really smooth and easy-to-use app. So I really don't care how big a company you're dealing with. Um, you don't know what you're going to encounter until you do. And I agree with you. I think Disney did a great job handling this. I, like you, I didn't jump right to Mandalorian. Um, I know I, like a lot of people you mentioned were doing that. Also, I saw a lot of people go into that live-action Lady and the Tramp. Those are the two big advertised originals that yeah. hit hit big the channel launch today. titles. Yeah, and um, I I kind of wanted to a I kind of wanted to pace myself watching those, and then B, uh, you said you got your kids on the bus. I actually allowed my kids to stay home today as kind of a surprise. They didn't. They knew this date was coming with the Disney Plus launch, and they were very excited because my kids they've grown up in that era where um, Disney movies aren't super accessible. If you look at the streaming services, they fall victim to a lot of like Netflix having cars two and three, but not one. And one came out before, you know, when they were very little or before they were born. So they've been looking forward to this. You know, I'm not the type of dad who's going to run out and pay $30 for a DVD that I know my kids are going to break really quickly. Um, and we don't do a ton of digital in our household. So this was a big deal. They knew that this was going to be an opportunity to catch up on a lot of the movies that they had yet to see. So... I had made the decision to allow them to stay home, went out and actually bought uh, some some new Mickey Mouse shirts, and we made a big deal of it this morning um, when I surprised him and told him, I'm actually not taking you to school. We're going to get to binge watch Disney all day. So my kids, the first thing we did was watch all three of the first three uh, Toy Story movies, which they had never seen, because I want to watch Toy Story 4, but I want to watch it with the kids. Um, so I wanted to wait until they were kind of caught up. Yeah, I was amazed at the amount of content that's just available on that freaking app right now. I'm talking. Oh man! If if you were like a fan of the Sunday night Disney shows, the Disney movies, or the after school, or the TV, those movies, they're on this app. There's an there's an old movie I watched as a kid. It was like Mr. Boogity. And I just happened to search for it. It was there. There's those old classic animated shorts that you used to with Mickey Mouse from the 40s, 50s, 20s, 30s. They are there. There's a whole bunch of, not all the MCU movies are there yet, but a lot of them are, including Endgame. Now you're not going to get Spider-Man because that's a Sony property for, for 
intents and purposes. But let's talk about the app itself in general. I mean, it's kind of similar to Netflix where you can create separate profiles for users, right? Right, right. So we, we got it for free in our family with our family's Verizon wireless plan. So we've got several different households using it. Um, you're allowed to get seven devices hooked onto the app. Um, three different people can be on at once. So I think that's pretty good. I think that allows for good shareability. Everybody can create their own profile so you can kind of get your own likes. Um, I like that with my children so that they can have their own kind of playlist. I can have mine. And then we can kind of watch in separate rooms. So I, I really like the way that the app is set up. And then you mentioned like the vastness of the app. That's the first striking thing to me, Brian, was, you know, I said we, we made this Disney day. There was no way to kind of even get a taste of what this app has in the time that we had. There's just whether it's the Pixar movies that I mentioned, um, you know, and having all of those original number one Pixar movies, whether it's having those previously vaulted um, Disney classic animated films like, you know, Lion King and Little Mermaid um, and Aladdin whether it's having kind of that unique Disney channel or like you mentioned, those Disney um, kind of one-off movies that used to be on TV all the time. There's just so much on there. I didn't even get a chance to get into like the Marvel cartoons that I want to check out, like the original X-Men um, animated series from the nineties and things like that. There's just so, so much on the app day one. Right. And it's separated right at the top. We got Disney, Pixar, Star Wars, Marvel, and then National Geographic. So you got those big buckets there. But then it's broken down more in a bunch of different ways. There's some explore sections there. Um, there's an original section, which is the original programming just for the app. But I watched Peach Dragon. I watched, I did watch Mandalorian. We'll get into that in a second. But then I watched one of the key things because huge Disney fan. I like Walt Disney World. They have an Imagineering original content where the first episode was basically... Walt and how they built up Disneyland and it talks about what all went into it. Um, Imagineering is how they designed the rides. Excellent series if you're into that type stuff. But did you watch Mandalorian yet? I did. I did. I just did right before we came to actually record. So I watched it. I know we have some subscribers and some friends of the channel that have watched it three times. And um, so I'm looking at you on that Mulehorn Gaming but great, great show. I, I wanted to call it um, Narcos in Space just because of who you got playing Mandalorian, right? You got old. Right. Uh, what's his up? Uh, is it Pedro Pascal? Pedro Pablo. Pascal, yeah. And one of the coolest things is that he never takes his helmet off throughout the fir whole first episode. I hope that's something that continues because you really don't see that in a lot of kind of um, comic book movies. Once they cast kind of a famous actor – they almost feel obligated to show the actor's face in order to sell it. Not here. Here, you're, you're, the Mandalorians are what's, what really sell this first episode. Right. So it's written and produced by John Favreau. A lot of people know him. Of course, I originally know him from the movie Swingers. But he directed Iron Man. He directed Jungle Book. He directed the Lion King remake. He's well known. He didn't direct the episode, but he did write. And he is the executive producer in the series. Right, right. He's the, he's the man behind the series, the man making things happen. So, outstanding show if you're a fan of Star Wars. Also, if you watched it, let us know in the comments. What did you think of it? Um, it is important to know if you're not aware, it's not a binge show. They do have weekly releases. The first one came out this week, but the next episode is going to hit this Friday, and then they hit every Friday after that, I believe. Right, so you're getting two this week, which I think is pretty cool. So that you're going to get really able to jump right in. I, I think that is a um, a nice kind of balance between you know the binge and the weekly is the fact that you are getting an extra episode this week. Without spoiling it, the freaking ending was pretty crazy for that first episode, wasn't it? Right, right. And it's definitely got you hyped up for that second episode. It's got you wanting to come in for more. We definitely don't want to spoil it because, again, the app just went live today. So we want to give everybody a chance to watch it, but... It was action-packed from front to back, and uh, the ending definitely leaves you wanting more. There were some major character appearances in there as well. Um, I like the mix between kind of like new characters with kind of classic Star Wars characters. Speaking of classic Star Wars, all those other Star Wars movies are on the app, and guess what? They're in 4K, H UHD, HDR. I started watching real quickly. I put Star Wars New Hope on. 
the original movie and freaking gorgeous. So, yeah, my oldest daughter has never seen a Star Wars movie, and she told me she wants to sit down and watch all of them. I said, we're not binging those in one day. Yeah. That's for sure. But I'm excited, since she's showing the interest, to sit down and rewatch all the Star Wars. I may actually, although it's going to be tough to get through the first few, I may actually watch them kind of in, rather than the order they were released, watch them in kind of the chronological order. So she kind of gets the story. I was trying to get my kids to watch the old school DuckTales that I was used to, but they wanted to watch the new one. So that's what they're watching. I was like, I was kind of like, man, come on. You could watch this on the Disney Now app. You have been watching it. There's so much goodness, so much content. Let's watch some of the old stuff, the stuff that's great. But I haven't even touched the surface. There's so much to, to watch on that freaking app. Um, yeah. I'm... Definitely glad. Now, I signed up for it when uh, D23 Expo came. If you signed up for the free membership on D23, they actually had a three-year deal. I think it was 100 and something. It came out to like $3 a month for three years. And I'm glad I did it because I fully believe within a year or so, you know that monthly price is going to increase. Yeah, I would imagine so. I could not turn down that one-year free uh, subscription. I think that that... I, that's another thing. If you're out there complaining and you were able to get a free subscription, I don't know what I don't know what you're complaining about. Um, to me, this was a home run deal. Right, and like I said, huge Disney fan, so I love it. I love all the old school nostalgia content that you can watch. All that stuff that was in the Disney Vault is on this app. It's there for you to watch. But are you are you going to keep it after the year, Jack? What do you think? Uh, as long as they continue to funnel in new content, there's no doubt that just the content that they've got on there, my kids will not be able to look at me and say, dad, I'm bored for a good year. That's for sure. There's no arguments about that. Um, beyond the year, it's all going to depend on what new stuff that they bring on. But I definitely foresee that happening um, and being consistent. And even if they just continue to funnel in the new MCU content, the new Star Wars content, um, I'm going to be thrilled. And again, we haven't even gotten to the to the Disney Plus MCU shows that are going to be hitting this app. So there's still so much more great stuff to come. Right. I'm definitely enjoying it. If you guys have this app, if you started using it, again, let us know in the comments. Are you happy with it? How long did it take? If you had that issue with not being able to connect, was it resolved for you? Or are you still on that issue? I know the... Disney Plus does have a separate Twitter account that's handling a lot, a lot of that customer support, so make sure you check that out. But let us know. What do you think of the app? What do you think of the content? What do you think of the user interface? Is it is it easy for you to navigate? I like it a little bit more than Netflix because it's easier to search, easier to find, but there's a lot of categories, so I can see that kind of turning some people off. But for me, it's a little bit easier because it also like reminds me of other things to maybe search and look for when I see something that's like, oh, yeah, I remember this, but do they have this on here? Yeah, my favorite part of the search function, Brian, was the collections. Yes. Where you actually have like Toy Story collection where it featured all the Toy Story movies and then all the Toy Story shorts yep. all together in, in kind of one collection. They've got several of those. Yeah, there's one um, for Darth for their, Vader. Right, for their different properties. Yeah. And not only are the Star Wars movies, but all those Disney Star Wars cartoons are on there as well. Oh, yeah, Rebels, all of that. Clone Wars. Yep. Uh, so there it is, guys. That was our experience. First day of Disney+. Plus. I'm definitely glad I have the app. I know my wife's happy. They already have their separate profiles. One thing we didn't mention, when you set up your profile, you can set your own avatar. They have a bunch of different Disney characters for you to choose from. So have at that. But Disney+, Plus, I enjoy it. Jack, you enjoy it. Yeah, I'm going back to watch it as soon as I'm done recording here with you. Right. Then again, let us know. Do you enjoy it? Are you happy with it? And will you keep it? Yeah, and were you like Brian and I where you got your Disney shirts on? Brian, I saw you with the Mickey Mouse pancakes or, or <laughs> waffles. Um, were you like us? Were you that hardcore about it? Um, are you excited? 